assisted at Friends, and not only had a wonderful time, they got a great education. They have um, socially and academically, I probably should say academically and socially <laughs> in that order, but um, they, they're still doing well, and they're still, um, I think, um, living out of what um, Friends uh, stands for and stands on. So I just will tell my sister how happy I am. Just leave those there, I'll give them to you when you go. So I, mil veces gracias por todos. Sus, uh, thank you, thank you, thank yes. you. We are so happy to be yeah. here. And just the fact that you want to come here is just wonderful and it makes uh, what Friends stands for real to me too. And if you look at our vision and mission, it probably overlaps, that kind of thing. I did sit in on somebody's class and it was about Quakers. And he was a marvelous teacher, lots of fun. I don't know whether he's still there in the high school. It's probably Herb. Handsome man. <laughs> Beard? Yeah. Herb, maybe? Herb, probably. Herb. Yeah, yeah, he was probably good. Herb. He was good. They were paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Centro Arte para la Paz. My having been here during the war as long as I was here, I truly had the opportunity to bond with people in ways that are not normal ways of bonding. And so there's an intensity about belonging. And um, my job emerged like all jobs emerge. I mean, nothing was business as usual during the war. And different needs called for different skills, etc., etc. But this was my, this is my latest passion. And it is... Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, well, it's a healing space. We are, are, we're trying to heal the trauma of war, the trauma of no options for young people, the trauma of disintegration of family with migration, the trauma of poverty, and layers and layers of trauma. And um, I am not an artist. I love to sing, and I sang in some very good choirs but I do not play an instrument. Even as a little girl, I played the accordion. Um, but um, I know that art heals me. Um, I've known that for years, just going to New York City and going to museums and going to shows and plays and exhibitions, etc. So um, when I was touring through Central America to find a place to stay with a couple of other sisters who had been in Chile, I had been in Chile to give talks on feminist theology. And uh, I took a sabbatical because I fell in love with the women working with poor women then. And so I went back and I met this group of sisters. There were two of them, three, and um, uh, myself. They wanted to live or locate closer to home. We had no cell phones in 1980 and uh, airfares were even higher, et cetera, et cetera, because not that many people went. And, so anyway, they, we toured Chiapas, Mexico, Nicaragua, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. And two fell in love with Guatemala, and they could afford to because they had been talking Spanish for 25 years in Chile, and I didn't know any Spanish. Uh, so I certainly couldn't learn an indigenous language, which you need to learn in Guatemala. But I did fall in love, and so did Pat Farrell with El Salvador. And I, we listed all the things that were just so positive in our opinion as to why we wanted to work here. And I'll tell you, I had, uh, during that little three weeks of touring in every country, three weeks in every country, or three weeks here, one night we went to supper uh, with a group of married old priests, their house. And the one guy, uh, cooking, gourmet cook, had the radio on. And the music was wonderful. And I double checked and I said, is that a CD or is that the radio? He said, oh no, we have a classical radio station. That was it. I knew, and in ningún otro país, in no other country in Central America had a classical radio station. So uh, I knew I could survive even a, even a war with classical music. So I really do believe our heels. So that's our aim, to build a culture of peace using the arts as the vehicle. And in the beginning, it was a lot of painting and drawing and noticing the colors and letting, we have batucada drums from Brazil, letting kids pound out what they 
what they remember, what they feel, what they see there when they look inside, etc., etc. So we do have a lot of, now that we're open five years, this is our fifth year, we do have a lot of instruments, we have guitar, we have harp. You're hearing a harp. Uh, we have a woman who comes from Canada every 12 weeks and gives lessons. And now they've advanced so that they get lessons also by Skype. Wow. Um, yeah, is that good or what? So um, that comes, um, that's every Sunday. Well, we just had a concert, uh, two concerts in Guatemala. I just was in Guatemala this weekend. We left on Saturday. We came back on Sunday, 10-hour uh, buses. But um, it was just wonderful. Our kids integrated with little Guatemalan children who have been playing the harp as well. And it was a street fair right down by the plaza. And it was just wonderful, just, just wonderful. So, um, and we have guitar, of course, and we have flutes, and we have melodicas, and voice. One of the two women you met in the courtyard, she's a singer from San Francisco. And um, so we do puppets, and in that courtyard over there, or the corridor over there, you'll see a lot of boxes. It's called a peace train, and little kids are getting into these boxes, and they're... Um, you know, how do you feel the first train or the first cab is emotions when people need you or people are angry with you? How do you feel? It's going through the stages of dealing with your own inner anger or violence without giving violence back. We do have the Quaker program, um, you call it AVP, it's in the prisons in the States. Um, we've had that going for four years now and we have a good 20 who have taken the advanced. So they're doing these groups in these communities. Um, we have uh, other programs like Discipline with Love. In El Salvador, people don't discipline or they still do it quite violently. So it's really creative parenting. But we also did that course with teachers um, not so much that the teachers are violent, but that the teachers can teach parents at parent-teachers gatherings, mm -hmm. which are mm -hmm. taken seriously in this country. They're obligatory. Um, and the themes are not identified. So you can do in your school whatever themes you want. So we're trying to get them to do this creative parenting, creative discipline. And so we have art and we have drawing. When we have volunteers or teachers we can afford to pay because we've written projects. So like for instance the Batukara drums, um, they, um, that was a $3,000 project and we wrote it so that we could include kids from the campo because we have to pay their car fare and a little bit of food for them if they come that distance. Um, when we have harp, we made sure that there would be a couple from the campo, and we had three from the campo in the midst of the other, I think, seven of them, there were 11, I think, when we started, eight of them. And, um, oh, some programs are just in the campo, like we had a psychologist. We have a few communities where you have students at risk vis-a-vis -vis gangs. Little gang activity, heavy recruitment to get young people into gangs. And it comes from San Martin, a, a gang city, and Aguilares. And we're right here. So they come in to kind of recruit our young people. So we're into prevention more than anything. But um, so um, we had a psychologist.